Hi, my name is Barnaby Donoghue and I work here at Pico Technology and today I'm going to take you through the guided test for the canvas physical layer, which means in plain speak that we're going to use the picoscope to look at the voltages on the can high and the can low lines uh, on this vehicle. Uh, today's example is the high speed powertrain can. Um, on the powertrain can network, you will have an engine control module, the ABS module, instrument cluster, and maybe the airbag system as well. Now we might want to look at that if, for example, we've got a loss of functionality, um, maybe the ABS light is on and your ABS system isn't working, maybe your instrument cluster hasn't got the engine or vehicle speeds registering or coolant temperature. Um, all those types of faults can be caused by uh, CAN um, problems. So let's uh, run the test. If we go to PicoScope, we can go to the automotive menu. We can click communication networks and CAN, L and H, low and high. Now, what we see is PicoScope brings up for you uh, test guidance and beneath that, we've then got the example waveform on the PicoScope screen itself, um, which has also been set up with all the presets that you need to capture your waveform. So you don't need to worry about any of that, it's all ready to go. With that connected, the next thing to do is to connect up and run the test. So I've got PicoScope connected via the USB lead and now I want to connect two channels for this CAN network. So I want to connect CAN low and CAN high. So we connect CAN high to channel A of the PicoScope. And I'll just put that across here for the minute. And we'll need channel B for CAN low. So we've got our two test leads for our two channels. Now if we join the earth fly leads on the two test leads and we can connect those to the uh, good earth. In this case we've got battery earth right here. Now next thing we're going to do is we've put in a breakout lead onto the CAN network here um, to make uh, access a lot easier. If we add that in so we're doing can low first on channel B and can high on channel A. Now, if you're looking at the guided test whilst we're doing this, you'll notice that there is a difference. The guided test assumes that you've got access at the, uh, to a high speed network or the powertrain network at the diagnostic link connector or the OBD connector under the dashboard. On this type of vehicle, it's a VAG group vehicle and many others, you can't access the high speed or any other CAN buses through that connector. You've only got access to a, a CAN controller um, gateway. So um, in this case, it's the instrument cluster. So the OBD connects directly to the instrument cluster, which regulates the communication between your diagnostic tester and your other networks and control units within the vehicle. So that's why we've had the control here we won't get any signals um, at the diagnostic link connector. If we can now go back to PicoScope itself. Uh, we, as I said, it's all ready to go. So what we want to do is we start the scope. So now it'll be waiting to receive any messages that come along. And because we want to activate the high speed network, we're gonna wake up the vehicle by turning on the ignition you'll get some communication, then we'll start the engine, we'll get even more communication, um, and we can capture all that on PicoScope. So it's started and ready to go. Now, we can see or hear that we've got a nice um, uh, waveform on the screen, or lots of waveforms um, going by the screen. Uh, that looks pretty good, so I'm going to stop the scope, and now we can stop the vehicle. So when we look at uh, the waveform on the screen, we can see that it's uh, nice and clear with good transitions between the high and low states of the, um, on both the high and low networks. So, um, you'll see that CAN-A is going between 2.5 uh, 
Um, so I can high is going between 2.5 and 3.5 volts, so that's on channel A. And then can low is going from 2.5 volts down to 1.5 volts, and that's on channel B. Um, so they're both mirroring each other around 2.5 volts. That looks really nice on our screen, all good there. Um, one thing that causes some confusion that we can see at the end of the signal is that you'll notice that the voltage um, on both can high and can low exceeds the previous voltages. So on can low, it's a little bit lower, on can high, it's a little bit higher. Um, and that's because at this point in the signal, every ECU that has read and understood that message uh, sends a um, signal back uh, on the network and says, uh, just a very quick one bit signal and says, yes, I've received this message, which is why, because you've got several communicating at one time, that's why the voltages are a little bit higher. Uh, we can go back to our guided test and we can see that we've got, um, uh, we can compare our uh, waveforms uh, to those that we see in there. We can also, um, uh, it also describes the waveform library um, where we can get further examples. Um, maybe you want to look at different networks, different vehicles, that type of thing. And beyond that, maybe you want to understand a bit more uh, about what the CAN network actually and how it operates and uh, more about the messages and what's in them um, and other testing um, uh, scenarios. So that's actually all in the further guidance section of the guided test, uh, which we've put together for you to help you on your CAN bus testing journey. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's presentation and uh, gets you on your way. Uh, thanks for joining us.